Dowie Charcoal Iron and Steel Works, centred on the little community 60 kilometres northeast of Perth and operated since 1975 by Agnew Clough. In its heyday, it employed 1,500 people. It was one of those industries considered so vital to the West Australian economy that it received heavy subsidies renewed as recently as two years ago in order to keep it alive. These included the state taking over $700,000 of the company's loans, refunding all payroll tax right up to June 1980, and trebling the rail freight subsidy payable to Agnew Clough on iron ore from Koolianobbing. Its fortunes have varied, but its closure, officially last week, caught many by surprise. As, incidentally, Agnew Clough won't be leaving Wandawi altogether. It's now the proprietor of a new vanadium industry, poised, ironically, just up the road from the pig iron plant. This report on the scrapping of one industry and the setting up of another is from Murray McLaughlin. For 30 years, the very reason for being for Wandawi Township was to house a labour force for the charcoal, iron and steel works. The pig iron works were Wandawi. They were shut down on Friday. 14 years and they just they let you go, that's it. They don't even ask you why, you know, they don't... Um, nobody called me and said, why are you going? Can we do anything for you? Um, nothing. Just you've done 14 years here, OK, goodbye and buggy, I'll set you out, you know. And everybody feels better about it, you know, it is a... There's a better feeling in the town, because they, they reckon this, this company has destroyed one day. Michael Klumyuk escaped from the yes, Ukraine as a younger man. On Friday afternoon, he turned his back for the last time on the Wandawi Pig Iron Works. Wandawi has been Michael Klumyuk's only job since he came to Australia 31 years ago. For him too, a redundancy check. No thank you, no farewell, no prospect of another job. Michael Klumyuk and his workmates had cause to be proud of their product. Wandawi was one of few such works left in the world. It exported tens of thousands of tonnes a year. The product was world-renowned. The workers knew it. Some lost their lives at Wandawi. Many more had sons for whom it was a natural part of growing up, also to join the workforce. Uh, they dropped the axe and gave us all a month's notice and everybody was, well, devastated, you know. They and in shock really couldn't believe i couldn't believe when my son came home and told me uh, i was home off shift and uh, my son came home and told me that everybody received a month's notice and i thought he was having me on but uh, he just couldn't believe it you know for most of its life one dowry was run by the state for several years it ran at a loss it was sold in 1975 by the liberal government to agnew Clough limited some thought then that free enterprise had taken on a new shade of meaning Agnew Clough paid $390,000 cash and took over $2 million worth of liabilities to secure outright this famous industry. In the first 18 months, they'd made a profit of more than $660,000. Then came a downturn in world demand and price for Wandawi pig iron. Wandawi had endured many times before the fickle phases of the world iron and steel market. This time, the new private enterprise owners turned to the government and found an outstretched hand. By an act of parliament, the original sale agreement was amended. Agnew Clough was relieved of its obligation to repay $700,000 in loans, one third of the original liabilities package. An already generous freight subsidy was trebled. Payroll tax was wiped. When he introduced that bill to parliament, the then Minister for Industrial Development said, had the government not acted, it was probable the industry would have closed and many residents would have been forced to leave town in order to find work opportunities. Only the government and Agnew Clough know how much taxpayers' money went to support the company's operation for six years. Neither has yet revealed that figure. However many millions of dollars it was, the consistent justification was the benefits that would accrue to the workforce. The major benefit is that the employees will be able to retain their jobs. Indeed, it is hoped that the job opportunities will be increased, said another minister less than two years ago. Oh, I worked up there around 14 years, ever since I come to Australia. And um, like everybody else, I was pretty shocked when they, when they said they were closing the place down. When it bought one Dowie Iron and Steelworks six years ago, for a fraction of the total concessions and subsidies since paid out by the state government, Agnew Clough was able to gain freehold title 
to prime tracts of Crown land near Wandawi Township. Thousands of hectares. Agnew Clough is now selling off those assets it acquired in 75. One 3,000 hectare block is reported already to have been sold. Another block, 450 hectares, has been subdivided for sale against the advice of government agencies and departments. Neil Hodgson's cattle stud adjoins that Agnew Clough land. He fears that once the subdivided blocks are sold off, they'll be cleared. That would raise salt levels on his land, which is already poisoned by salt near the Agnew Clough boundary. A big portion of our farm depends on whether or not that country is developed. Um, Salinity-wise, we're going to lose a vast area of land up the creek ways plus our water supply. So what at the moment is that Agnew Clough land holding? Is that the barrier? Is it uh, holding any advancement of salinity? Oh, I think it is, yes. Um, the, uh, the tree cover that's on there at the moment, it's holding our creek. Um, we feed a lot of, we water a lot of stock on the creek and uh, uh, that cover seems to be keeping the water at a good level. The creek which flows out of Agnew Clough's land is part of a proposed alternative water supply for Perth. Clearing which would follow the sale of this land would jeopardise that supply. Yet Agnew Clough has won approval to sell off in small blocks what six years ago was Crown land. It was 13 years ago that Basil Davis bought his farm half a mile downstream. Already in a dry summer, the salt content of the creek water is too high for Basil Davis's horses. Land clearing upstream would threaten his way of life. Well, this uh, creek, as far as I'm concerned, will be a, a, a complete loss to us. Um, we will not be able to use it at all, only during the winter uh, period. And um, we'd probably have to go underground for water, and then we uh, don't know what the uh, salinity level's gonna be with the trees missing. When you uh, bought your property here, what did you understand that the uh, land at the back of you that was? That was uh, going to be crown land for as, as long as we knew. You didn't expect that it would be sold off as it was to uh, Agnew? Definitely not, no. How uh, important uh, <coughs> a value would you place on the creek? Well, it's um, <coughs> the value of the creek's uh, virtually the property. Each point raised by this program was referred to Agnew Clough by Nationwide. The company refused to respond, beyond saying it had fulfilled all its commitments to the government. One of those commitments embodied in the original sale agreement was for Agnew Clough to build a vanadium plant at Wandawi, next door, in fact, to the iron and steel works. Things have not been going well at the new vanadium works this past year. Many workers have not been happy with the conditions. Many of them have been less happy that their health has deteriorated. A diminishing workforce at the new vanadium plant. A pressing backlog of export orders to Japan and Germany for vanadium pentoxide. A huge stockpile of pig iron at the old charcoal works next door. The fact that the iron works furnaces were carefully shut down for quick and easy refiring. One Dowie iron workers point to these factors in a scenario which may have backgrounded the Agnew Clough decision to close the iron plant and retrench a hundred workers. They couldn't man this vanadium plant over here. Uh, I believe they were something like 67% undermanned. I've known at times uh, just two guys turn up for a shift. And uh, the place had to go. It's a new uh, uh, industry. Uh, they should have been in full production long before this. And I, I, it's my personal opinion that they uh, more or less get the fellows that, when they want to shut the, uh, the steel works down, that, well, they'd automatically go up to the uh, vanadium plant. No, I think they, that's how they thought they were going to get their men to man the plant. Well, as far as we know, it's just a, an exercise in company policy. We reckon they needed men for the vanadium plant, and uh, this was the handiest way to get them. But they couldn't keep workers up then. Many of the retrenched workers from the iron plant were in fact offered jobs at the new vanadium plant. Some, like George Brennan, were said to be unfit and too old to make the change. George Brennan is unemployed now, after 29 years. But he didn't want to make the change anyway. Like many of his workmates, he had heard talk of healthy men at the vanadium plant coming down with eye, skin and chest problems. To Ian O'Donnell, those symptoms mean vanadium poisoning. To him, unemployment is a better option than a transfer to the vanadium plant. Uh, I hope I've got a job to go to. I've got a couple of 
offers, but uh, nothing definite. Just hoping I can get a job. Did you have a chance to go up the hill to the vanadium plant? I did, yes, but uh, I declined the offer owing to uh, the health risk which we believe is there. Uh, just won't do it. There are people who are going up though, aren't there? There are some that have gone, but uh, a lot of those have uh, given notice because uh, it has affected their health. Jack McGreevy too is unemployed these days. It gives him more time to tend his racing pigeons. But Jack didn't mean his life to be like this. He had been a loyal servant of various managements at Wandawi for 14 years. He accepted Agnew Clough's offer of a job at their new vanadium plant. He finished up last week after only 12 days. Well, the working conditions are very bad. And um, the plant itself, um, oh, it um, breaks down a lot, you know. Conditions are chemical conditions. They end up with green tongue, bleeding noses, sore eyes, rush in the face. This was just after 12 days. Did that affect your health? I mean, it's quite apart from the, uh, th those oh, symptoms. Yeah. yeah, it made you feel quick. That's true. You know, it felt wheezy in the chest at night, yet, you know, very wheezy. And um, you just, just felt, just felt, generally felt bad, you know. That was a... Had you been in ill health before you moved no, to the vanadium plant? Perfect health. So you, what, lasted it 12 days and 12 days, yeah. decided that it wasn't for you? It wasn't. It was the health risks to um, do what he thought, too dangerous. But you must have uh, thought of the financial uh, considerations of giving up the job? I did. I did. It means a lot to me. I mean, um, we got to live, you know what I mean? I'm no millionaire. It's just an ordinary worker in Mandawi. And, um, I thought a big lot about it, but uh, what am I going to do? Stay there for another few years and end up real quick, or go out and hope for the best, try and get something. The Agnew Clough vanadium plant is the first in Australia. It produces vanadium pentoxide, a valuable compound with many industrial uses. It's also officially classified as extremely toxic. The standard medical textbook on occupational diseases has a long list of the harmful effects of vanadium pentoxide. An edited list. Profuse weeping, burning of the conjunctiva, skin lesions, intense itch, green discoloration of the tongue, bronchitis, chest pain, pulmonary edema, and pneumonia, possibly fatal. Well, I'd, I'd had two 12 hour shifts in there, um, and I, as I say, the first night, the first 12 hours I put in, I, was in, I didn't have the correct uh, breathing apparatus, apparently. Uh, through no fault of mine, I didn't know that. And, um, and I'd done another 12-hour shift in there. It gave me t uh, 24 hours. And um, the place was very dusty, um, mainly because um, spillage on the floor and that hadn't been cleaned up and whatnot. And the dust is in there all the time. The phone rings, you must take your mask off and so you, straight away you, you uh, become contaminated just breathing the air in direct. You've got to answer the phone. You must take your mask off to answer the phone. Start me. And on the Monday morning, I, as I say, I was coughing pretty bad, and I went up uh, to the first aid. And um, my eye was terribly bunged up, and she just said I had a bit of dust in it, conjunctivitis, and had a look at my tongue, which was quite green, but she said it was OK, and I fronted up again for work on the afternoon shift on the Monday. And um, by... Uh, Tuesday morning when I uh, woke up Tuesday, I, was, I had a severe cough, a bad cough. I'd never had one before. Both my eyes were bunged up and all my face was puffed up around where the, where the mask didn't cover. And, um, you know, I just felt I wanted to claw them out, you know, it was very itchy. And then I went to the doctors and he put me off. I have a, a clearance from him here and it states that I must uh, the only way I can go back that I must wear full protective gear, breathing apparatus, uh, to save me from getting further um, toxic uh, vanadium. But he's not happy that you go oh, back? No, no he's, uh, he's not happy that I go back, no. He would rather me get a job elsewhere. Yeah, but uh, I live in the town here, we're going our home here, and uh, I'm 55 years of age and it's a bit hard for me to get up chasing jobs. Well, I have chased jobs, but I can't get one, I'll put it that way. Most medical literature on vanadium and workers' health lays down stringent safety guidelines. If the workers are to be believed, 
Agnew Clough is not conforming to these guidelines at its new vanadium plant. The Public Health Department suggested to Nationwide that routine inspections had shown the problems were only teething ones. Agnew Clough has retained its own health advisor, a Dr. Tees. Dr. Tees would not talk to Nationwide because he's paid by Agnew Clough and has a loyalty to the company. Agnew Clough, of course, would not comment either. But Mark Levis says Dr. Tees is also having communications problems with the company. Well, um, I had to go to a medical to Dr. Tees and uh, I was past fit. Uh, but he told me that um, he was having great difficulty in impressing upon the management of the, uh, the hazards down there, you know, safe-wise, the, with this breathing business. The company's own doctor told yes, you that? Yes, he told me that personally. Um, when I went for my medical before I was passed to go down there. Well, he was being frustrated? He told me, he, he thought he, his exact words, he said, I feel I'm butting my head against, up against a brick wall, I feel I'm wasting my time. They were Dr. Tease's own words to me. Well, uh, these various masks they were trying out, you know, and um, I wore them all and still ended up with green tongue, you know. Uh, apparently the only one really safe was an airline, an air wash mask. But then you couldn't, um, it was pretty uh, mobile, you couldn't do much in it really, you know. You were sort of tied to one spot. And the other masks seemed to be quite ineffective. As I say, you end up with the green tongue, also the rubber mask created a whole rice around your face, you know. And uh, conditions were pretty, pretty, conditions are pretty dirty and poor, you know. Did the workers complain to management about uh, those standards? Well, to tell you the truth, it's, um, they've complained to the safety officer about different things, you know, but um, it sort of lost the work, pushed to one side. I think, I think the safety officer is trying to do his best, but I don't think he's getting much... Um, much package, you know. They have a doctor and all the rest of it, and um, the only check I've had since I went up there was the next morning after I started up there, the, um, we were sent down to the medical room and we poked our tongue out of the uh, nurse's sister, and she just said, oh, yeah, you're okay, off you go, see, and that was it. The thing is, this green tongue, you can get it there the next morning, it's faded away, see, and you, um, you go back and then you get another dose of it. And the trouble is, we, nobody seems to know what the long-term, what the long-term effects are of it. What's a bloke going to do? You're going to work up there and come out a few years' time quick? I was told uh, there was two masks there, and when I went to use them, there were two of them they were just laying on the floor, where chaps had used them and hadn't washed them and put them away as they should be. Um, they were just left on the floor. Uh, one of them, the connecting hose, uh, was US. You couldn't use it, so they'd only left one, one for two men. Did the company not seem to show concern? Well, I told... Um, the, uh, the manager and he told me to refer it to my shift foreman, which I did do. Um, well, then uh, the next day I, I was taken off sick and I don't know to, to now whether they had been repaired or not, I don't know. Are people uh, generally happy? Is it a happy workforce at the vanadium plant? No, no. Well, you've only got to look at the exodus. Uh, the chaps go down there, they spend a, some a few hours and they, they turn it, uh, you know, they give it away. If Agnew Clough had hoped that retrenchments from the iron plant would provide a captive workforce for their new vanadium plant, then the schemes backfired. Now, for a large number of people who grew up with Wambowie, it's all over by the shouting. Many are packing their bags. Property prices have slumped. And for those who are choosing to stay on, with or without a job, the spirit of the town will never be the same. This one here is retired pensioner, second one, retired pensioner, third one, retired pensioner, fourth one has just been retrenched, fifth one, just been retrenched, sixth one, vacant, seventh one, pensioner, and next one, deceased, next one, um, ex-garage proprietor, Next one, sold, uh, State Housing Commission housing um, builder, now left and gone to Albany. The house is up for sale. Parties the last house in this block is a Over. It's time to call it a day. They burst your pretty balloon. And taken that moon away It's time to wind up The last
masquerade Just make your mind up The piper must be paid They let you go, that's it, they don't even ask you why, you know, they don't... Um, nobody called me and said, why are you going, can we do anything for you? Uh, nothing. Just, you've done 14 years here, okay, goodbye and buggy, that's it, you're out, you know. And everybody feels better about it, you know, there's a... There's a better feeling in the town. But they, they reckon this, this company has destroyed one dowie. That report uh, was compiled by Murray McLaughlin, and I should mention that we were given no assistance, incidentally, by either Agnew Clough or the Public Health Department.